Welcome to Ask Sean, where I explore all sorts of questions about life, about relationships, about being human. I'm Sean Slevin. I'm a licensed professional counselor and a licensed marriage and family therapist. And if you have a question that you'd like to pose to me, you can go to www.askshawn.org. And there you can submit an anonymous question and with kind of yeah, whatever it is that you're, uh, you're wrestling with. Obviously, this is not therapy, not meant to be therapy. Uh, so if you're needing a therapist or if you're in crisis, you should try to reach out to somebody uh, directly who is going to be able to respond to you. So but for today, um, today's kind of question is something that uh, I was thinking about recently and um, yeah, just kind of gets posed, you know, in different forms to me uh, and by clients and, and people I know. And it has to do with kind of this idea of mantras and, um, you know, just like words and phrases that we repeat to ourselves to try to help ourselves, um, you know, be more grounded or to encourage ourselves, you know, those kinds of things. And it's wanted to kind of talk a little bit about the ways in which these can work really well, but um, what is necessary for them to work well and to explore some of why they might not be working for you. So I think one of the things that we have to um, we have to understand about kind of an, a mantra being effective is that it has to be tied to a real experience. For example, if I have a mantra of I can fly, I can fly, I can fly, I don't have any kind of real experiential category in my body or in my emotions of being able to fly other than the occasionally like the really awesome, you know, dream in the middle of the night, um, which those are wicked fun. But, um, but that's not, <laughs> um, that's not sufficient, right, to like bring up in my system, like uh, a connecting with like, I have the ability to fly. Um, now, I suppose because actually I have had some dreams where I'm flying, using that mantra would help me connect with those moments in those dreams, you know, so whatever the visceral and emotional experience was in those dreams, you know, that mantra would help me connect with that. Uh, but a mantra is going to be limited by what has our actual experience been. So, you know, mantras around, you know, things like I am loved, I am known, I am not alone, I matter, I have value, you know, these kinds of things. We have to be able to connect it to some sort of real actual experience we've had of those those emotions of that psychological state and how that felt in our psyche and in our body. So you can kind of think of a mantra as it's sort of like the like a file name. So if I have a file on my computer where the file name is I am loved, but I go to that file and it's empty, there's no actual experiences in there, the mantra is not going to do anything. And that's going to feel really frustrating and it's also going to feel really defeating and it's just going to further a sense of what's wrong with me? Why isn't this working? But, you know, if in the file there's like, you know, videos and audio recordings and pictures and letters people have written me, like then going and doing a search on my computer for where is the I am loved file and pulling that up and opening it, I'm going to connect with something real. There's actually data there. There's experiential data there. So, so this presents some interesting challenges, right? Because if we're using a mantra, it's probably in part because we're trying to help ourselves remember something or connect with something. And it's, so it's something that it's not yet like super second nature. You know, like we all have ways that we weren't loved perfectly growing up. So there's some, you know, there might be a mantra around, you know, I am loved in this particular way or I matter in this particular way. I'm seen, I'm valued. So what do we do if the mantra is not working? Well, the first thing is to consider there might be ways that we have some experiences of that, of what the mantra is meant to connect to that um, we just haven't done the work to actually connect the mantra to. Like that's sort of the good news is that as hard and as bad as life can be in the ways in which we all have wounding, there also usually are more good and redemptive moments in our lives than we might be aware of. 
So this can be an invitation to be like, okay, so where where is that experiential data? You know, like I'm trying to work on this. I'm trying to, um, you know, I'm trying to help my system, help my psyche, remember this truth, whatever the mantra is, you know, whatever the words are about. And so to really be trying to like remember, like, okay, where are some specific moments in my life, with whether it's with a therapist or a friend or a family man, member or a stranger even because you know strangers can be kind to us too <laughs> you know where where i've had some experiences of that and then i'm and then i really want to dial into or, or or dive into how did that feel and so this is where really trying to like activate as many of our senses as possible in terms of memory so you know where was i standing what time of day was it is it cloudy is it sunny is it rainy is it fall is it spring is it winter you know what was happening around me and then what was happening in me how did my body feel in this moment as i had this experience of feeling loved feeling seen you know mattering you know feeling competent feeling able feeling my agency feeling you know a sense of ability to do something to make something happen in the world you know how did that feel in my body where did i feel that in my body was there a sense of you know kind of like rootedness was there maybe a sense of like i felt like some strength in my arms or maybe a warmth in my chest, uh, maybe a sense of being held. You know, maybe someone was actually hugging me. So let me tune into that. How did that feel to have their have their arms around me? Um, how did it feel to see their smile, to hear their tone of voice? So we really want to do the work to actually connect with the memory, at least one memory. Now, if we're having trouble doing that, so say we're trying to use a mantra and we and as we try to we're realizing the mantra is not working, and is and we start to go searching for okay, where's the experiential data to like connect the mantra to? And it's like we keep coming up empty. I'm not finding anything. I'm not finding any experiences where I've you know have felt loved, for example. So first of all, I just want to say that's that's really hard. Um, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry for whatever has been missing. And I'm glad that you are noticing. Like it's good, it's good, even though it's painful, it's good to notice that something's missing. That means we're starting to wake up. That means something in us is wanting to live. You know, something in us is willing to bear the pain of noticing what's been absent, what's been hurting. And then I would say you really, it would really be good to get a therapist or if you have a therapist to talk to them about this specifically. Because that's gonna do two things. One, they're gonna be able to, to, to help you start to have that experience. They're gonna be able to provide that, right? Like they're, if they're a good therapist, they're genuinely showing up and they really care about you. And they're gonna help you do whatever inter internal work you need to do to actually be able to let that in. And that's its own, and that won't go down that tangent right now, but that's its own bit of work. Like we don't, when we've been lacking nourishment in a certain way, we don't just automatically take it in. There's actually, there's actually a process of learning how to take that in. It's kind of like if you were raised on a certain kind of food and then you're exposed to other food that's maybe more nourishing, your body might actually not be able to digest it right away. And it's the same thing with emotions and psychological things. So yeah, so they're gonna be able to both show up in the ways that you're needing, but also help you learn how to recognize that and take that in. And they also might be able to help you start to notice places where maybe there are little moments in your life of some of this goodness that you're missing that you just haven't been able to see. Because that's one of the hard things when we've been deprived of certain kinds of goodness, certain kinds of nourishment, we don't even know to look for it. it can, we can be tuning it out without even realizing it. Um, so, but either way, if you're finding that, you know, you've got some kind of mantra that you're using or trying to use, and it's just like, I'm getting nowhere with this. I have tried to find some actual experiences in my life to connect it to, and I'm coming up empty. Then you've, you really need to reach out to a therapist. Now I'll put uh, a link in the description to a little guide that I've written um, that can kind of walk you through the process of choosing a therapist. Uh, and so hopefully that can, can be a help to you. Um, but yeah, you're gonna need you're gonna need help with this. We can't do this on our own. We're not meant to do life on our own. And there are people in the world who want to help us. There's actually a lot more people in the world that want to help us than we realize. Uh, I know the world can be really broken and messed up in all sorts of ways, uh, and that's true. But it's not the whole truth. 
Like the world also can be really beautiful and really kind uh, and really safe, even as strange as that may sound to say. So I hope that this, yeah, I hope this can be helpful to y'all. Uh, I hope it can shine a light on maybe some places where you're trying to do something good for yourself and been like, why isn't this quite working? You know, see people say, you know, like, you know, repeat this thing to yourself and why isn't it working for me? So I hope that can help you make sense of like, okay, well, here's some of the reasons and that this can give you some guidance on how to try to work with that and um, yeah, and kind of where to go if you're feeling really stuck with it. So, well, it's been good, good to get to share with y'all, good to be with y'all here in this way and uh, yeah, that's all for now. So until next time, peace be with you.